rabbits. For nearly two centuries, Australia has been waging a war against these small, nocturnal vegetarians. These lands department teams are working in complete unison with the farmers of the district, and in doing so, play an important part in this all-out war on the rabbit. We've poisoned them on the ground and from the air. The poison bait is loaded onto an aircraft, one of 11 that's being used in the campaign. The bait will be dropped on inaccessible areas. Their underground homes have been exploded and bulldozed. And we've infected them with deadly viruses. Still, they remain our most widespread and destructive pest, inhabiting around 70% of the continent, impacting on more than 300 species of native plants and animals, and costing more than $200 million every year in lost production. Domesticated rabbits arrived with the first fleet, but pioneer pastoralist Thomas Austin is blamed for introducing wild rabbits. In 1859, he shipped 24 of them from England for hunting on his property, Barwon Park, near Geelong. We're releasing the rabbits on Christmas Day and we shall go out and hopefully shoot them all. I guess he was doing what seemed like a good idea at the time. He was doing what he thought was right. And uh, up until then, I mean, rabbits had been here since 1788. They'd, they'd never really taken off, so his worries were probably, are these rabbits going to survive? More than survive, they thrived. In 1866, more than 14,000 rabbits were bagged during one of Austin's regular hunts. So, in just seven years, 24 rabbits had become more than 14,000 here at Barwon Park, Austin's home. And local landholders were beginning to complain bitterly that rabbits were taking over their pastoral properties and eating their crops. By the 1870s, landowners across Western Victoria and parts of South Australia were building large and long dry stone walls to keep the rabbits out. Building a wall that was rabbit proof was quite an exercise because they had to dig down uh, so the rabbits couldn't easily burrow under it. How successful was that rabbit wall, do you think? Not really, I don't think. The rabbits would have simply gone around the stony rises. They spread right throughout Australia soon after. In the early 1900s, the rabbit-proof fence was constructed in Western Australia. It was the longest unbroken fence in the world at the time. As the Great Depression hit, rabbit shooting became a national pastime, providing valuable food. Up to a million rabbits a year were killed for canning. Tins were sent to servicemen fighting world wars. Imagine what it must have been like for some poor young digger from up some of the bad rabbit country in the Mallee who was sitting in the trenches over there and, and he's handed a tin of canned rabbit. Um, I think that would have been the last straw. The determination to destroy was as relentless as it was futile. With rabbits able to produce seven litters a year, they were in plague proportions by the middle of last century. Their voracious appetites denuding the landscape, causing erosion, loss of habitat for unique native animals, and forcing farmers off their land. The 1950s saw the first of the biological controls. Myxomatosis was as ugly as it was effective. Within three years of its release in 1950, 90% of Australia's rabbit population had been decimated. By the 1980s, Mixo was losing its potency and fleas from Spain were introduced to help spread the disease across the hot inland. Well, I've had a lot of requests from station owners in the northern areas for uh, rabbit fleas to release. Dr Brian Cook later turned his mind to the next biological tool. The Khaleesi virus, as it was then known, was trialled on South Australia's Wardang Island, but it unexpectedly found its way to the mainland. It obviously comes to that point eventually that um, we ask the question of, of whether we should be trying to contain it or whether we, uh, we simply turn around and, and um, make the most out of it. For scientists, it was an embarrassment. For farmers, it was a godsend. 
And I remember a story of a fellow near Yunter driving his truck backwards and forwards over a, a dead rabbit and then driving 50 kilometres up the road to his property. A year after the escape, the Khaleesi virus was formally released. Thakaringa Station near Broken Hill has borne witness to the rise and fall of rabbit numbers. I first visited this property in 1995. The fifth generation to farm here, David Lord, was exasperated at the rabbit damage. Yeah, well, there's plenty of activity here. As you can see, they're cleaning the burrows out, they're breeding again, there's fur on the ground. Um, very, very active burrows here. Within weeks of recording this interview, Khaleesi virus swept through. Well, here we are a year later, David. Since then, the RCD, Rabbit Khaleesi virus, has gone through your property. Now, this is an active warren. Has RCD worked? Absolutely, yes. Um, there's up to five, you know, we've seen five rabbits here. Uh, there would be between 30 and 50 otherwise. Landline continued to check in on Thakaringa. So it's five years since yeah. RCD went through your property. Yep. What are we seeing here? We're seeing the warren vegetating over with this copper burr, which is pretty typical of, of around the property. Um, there is evidence uh, of the odd rabbit here, and strangely enough, there's a dead one here. David Lord ripped more than 28,000 warrens to capitalise on the viral opportunity. And 24 years after that first visit, I returned to the Outback Sheep and Cattle Station. This is the warren where we found the first RC rabbit that died of RCD in 1995, the first confirmed case. It's a lot more vegetation than I remember. Yeah, oh, it's huge. We were losing 28 tonnes of vegetation per day. The landscape of windswept Macquarie Island is so different from the sunburnt plains of inland Australia. But the Khaleesi virus, along with the use of specially trained dogs, has had a profound impact on the ecology. I think it's incredible. I came down here in 2010 and I could see rabbits on the hillside and a lot of the damage. And now we're still seeing rapid change with increasing tussock coverage on the hillsides, little fungi popping up all over the place, insects, and it's just going to keep going. In 2015, the sub-Antarctic island of Tasmania became the first jurisdiction in Australia to eradicate rabbits. And of course, um, eradication is, cannot be done by one, only one method, so it was absolutely essential that the hunters and, and dog handlers followed up. Rabbit. In mainland Australia, eradication will oh, yeah. never happen. But with the original Khaleesi virus losing its sting, because rabbits have developed immunity, the battle to find new viruses continues. So we brought in 38 variants from Europe and from Asia and really assessed those with the, with the view of trying to select a new strain that was going to have more impact in the wetter, cooler, higher production areas of Australia. Virus okay. one. Yeah. In 2017, the latest weapon was deployed. Okay. It was a strain of the rabbit hemorrhagic disease, referred to simply as K5 because it originated in Korea. In a giant citizen science project, virus-laced carrots and grain were released at more than 600 sites across the country. Yeah, there's, there's certainly an, an awful lot of interest from the community to participate in the rollout and to provide us with information. Following the release, spotlight counts helped determine whether it had done its job. Look at that, there's one. Right, we've got some ice shine. Landline was at the CSIRO in Canberra when the first rabbit to have died from K5 was formally diagnosed. As you can see, the liver is very pale and yellowish, and this discoloration is usually the, the telltale sign that this rabbit died from rabbit hemorrhagic disease. Mm -hmm. But it became clear while the virus was knocking down about a third of the rabbits at release sites, it wasn't spreading. So there'll be people who are watching this who say they can still see loads of rabbits on their properties. On the basis of that, was it a success? I still say yes to that because we've had 
two breeding seasons since the release. A virus is never going to take out every last rabbit and rabbits, as we know, breed like rabbits. So as soon as there's one, there's many. K5 is still available and can be distributed to reduce rabbits in specific locations. Oh, I can see something running yeah. across the screen. Rabbit to friend of That was a rabbit, was it? Yeah. <laughs> OK, that's quite exciting really, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> and the work has already begun to find the next weapon in this never-ending battle against the bunny.